Hey folks, Jonathan here. Wanted to do this new intro for anybody that's just now coming to my channel. Here's a wrecker I built two years ago. I also build rollbacks, rat rods, steam engines, you name it, whatever it is, we'd liable to build it. But we're working on a four-wheel drive wrecker build right now. And to get you up to date on it, I'll show you. Here it is as it sits today. 7.3 international diesel Allison automatic four speed uh, 1957 front end and rear end out of an international uh, Navy truck uh, 616 gears and uh, we've got it together and running enough to, to actually road drive but we are building a sliding rotator hydraulic outriggers on the side hydraulic outriggers on the back the boom will be able to move all the way back and rotate around and uh, this is where we stand now but keep watching if you want to see it finished Hey folks, Jonathan here. I uh, just want to show you what, what I'm in the middle of here. I just cut a piece of three quarter and laid it up top there. It's 24 by 24, which is the correct size that I need. And uh, I've just got a piece of pipe down there. You can see just holding them out. And uh, you know, this is all temporary. I'm just looking at some setup because once you do something, you know, you can't, you know, uh, well you can, you can go back and have to redo it again, but that's what I'm trying to keep from doing. And uh, so far, I uh, run into a couple little things I will show you. Uh, you know, I, I just went 24 inches, and what I wanted to do was leave enough room here to be able to get to bolts. And these bolts that go up into the, the top plate, you know, I need to have room here to be able to, to get in there to put them in and, you know, tighten them and, you know, check the torque on them. And, you know, I can turn it and get to all of them, but... Uh, I went ahead and you know just let it overlap a little bit and uh, so or let the gear over, or the bearing overlap the plate so nothing fancy just square plate but what I ran into you know one of the critical things on a gear like this that bolts down flat I don't know if you can see the light between it in some places uh, there you go I think you can see it there uh, it's not, it's not good and level. And I cut this with the plasma so it didn't, you know, warp it, I'm sure. But, uh, old piece of steel been laying around. But what I'm getting at is, is we're going to have to machine this piece, uh, before we bolt this gear on. Because, you know, if you bolt it down like that, you're going to be putting this, uh, gear in a bond. And I mean, it may pull this straight instead, but we're not going to take a chance on that. So, uh, there's, you know, when you, I've got some bigger machines, but nothing, you know, huge, but I've actually, my lathe won't, check, you know, it won't turn but 20, uh, 20 inches, so, you know, and I didn't even measure corner to corner, but it's far, far beyond that, because it's 24 just crossed, but, uh, what I'm going to do is set this up, I'm actually going to set it up in the milling machine, and, uh, use a, uh, face mill, and mill it, but I'm debating, if I can clear it, I'm going to wait until I get the sides welded on. You know, I really want to get it all welded together and, and completed before I mill it because, uh, or, or surface it just because, uh, you know, I may warp it welding it on because, you know, we're going to put some heavy welds on this thing. And, uh, and what I'll do is I'll probably only surface the area that it's sitting in and, uh, the way that I'm going to set this plate up because you know you're sort of limited on what you can do I don't want to set it up in the milling machine and then have to take it out and you know reset it and 24 inches is a lot to to do and uh, I think I'm going to set it up on a uh, indexing header rotary table to where I can just do the actual groove where the uh, where it sits at and uh, we will figure it out as we go though but uh I've got to make sure that I can clear everything with the, uh, you know, with it all welded together. But I uh, just want to show you where I was and go ahead and uh, we'll get back on it, get it back apart and get it, you know, everything ground and marked permanent and and uh, go ahead and try to get this carriage finished up and then, you know, we can start getting our length of our cylinder. I checked it out a little bit and I think we're going to be fine on it. I think I can actually work it out to where uh, 
it's actually I'm gonna be really close where I can just mount it where I wanted to mount it and what I'll do different is where I mount it here you know I, I, whether I mount it clear back toward the edge or up a little bit if I mount it up you know in the center of course but you know lengthwise about where that pins at I think I can get my full travel you know all the way to the end and you know it'll be mounted where I want it without having to uh, you know move where we mount it back here or or anything like that so you know it's gonna be some a little bit of math involved in getting getting our measurements right but anyway I wanted to show you and I'll uh, I'm gonna keep on it here and see if we can get a carriage together here soon and and uh, I'll show you more One of the other things I wanted to say also is, you can see we got 20 bolts running around this thing, on, just on the inside, and uh, our original wrecker boom setup only had six on the back and six on the front. That was 12 bolts, but really the, the six back ones was the, the important ones, you know, that's where it's pulling up and it was pushing down on the front, so, you know, there's no reason why 20 good grade 8 bolts is not going to hold this fine, so uh, anybody think there's a little any worries about that we we shouldn't have any worries and uh we're working on the gear situation i'm going to show you the other well the other gear that and what i ended up having to do okay i'm going to try to stay in the shade here where you can see this thing but uh this is our gear that we had picked up the other day that i showed everybody and uh as you can see it's you know almost completely wore out and i think there's about an eighth inch here at the top that's pretty good but but you can see how it fits but what we figured out is this uh the uh diameter pitch on this is actually uh three and it's actually a 14 and a half pressure angle on the side and uh you can get a you know a, a 20 and a 14 and a half is pretty common when you get to the big stuff like this it's going to usually be a 14 and a half but uh what i've done i couldn't find a cutter i was actually looking for a cutter for this i was wanting to make a gear and uh so went on the computer amazon uh turns out you know martin gear and some of the other places they will only make this gear and they only make this gear in uh, 11 and 12 teeth it's the smallest or 11 tooth is the smallest and this is 10 of course so uh decided to go to amazon looked on there and they actually had one that was 11 teeth uh, with just a, a smooth bore you know you bore it to what you want and then you uh you do any machine you need doing and you have it hardened uh, that gear was $315, but uh, it listed in the same area a used gear. Now, the used gear was the same bore diameter, and it had never been machined. Uh, so, I mean, how used could it be? And uh, $62 free shipping. So I went ahead and ordered that gear, and it's like I said, it's a little bigger because it's going to be at 11 teeth, and um, we're going to have to bore it to what we want, you know, cut our broach our keyways in. And then uh, the difference is going to be, it's going to be a little faster gear, but then again, I'm running a, a different, you know, gear reduction box than what was original anyway, so we're not going to have a problem there. And actually, it'll probably help us because it's going to put more, you know, more area of teeth touching. And uh, so that's our plan on that. Now, the gear I'm getting is three inches wide instead of two, so we're going to machine that down, and then we're going to have to do the bore in the center to what we need. We're sitting on top of it. And if I can show you by turn that wheel see normally it would be down on bottom so I'm gonna actually want to get this out I'm gonna machine a section of this off all the way down and uh, off this plate that way we don't uh, we can get it to clear this one's the same way and uh, but that's the reason that you uh, you know stack all this stuff up and put it together and because you know we're not doing this as blueprints or on computer or nothing like that so Okay, we're moving on on this one and trying to get everything ready to weld these in and uh, had to clean them back up, of course, because there was uh, just moisture in the shop. But I went ahead and took a uh, half inch ball mill and, and just ran it down through for that lip. And uh, so we shouldn't have any trouble with it hitting. Plus, we're actually adjusting everything out a little bit, so it's going to pull it away some. So we're going to be fine with that. We won't have any clearance issues now. So we're going to go ahead and get everything finished up on this plate. I still need to drill my holes for my oil tubes. I haven't done the two, the two tubes on this one. And uh, we'll go ahead and get these pins pressed in and welded in. And, and uh, that way we can uh, start getting everything welded together permanent here.
show you more. Okay, folks. Not much different than any other day. I've run out of time again. I didn't get as far as I'd like, but uh, I did get all these shimmed where I want them. Uh, you can see the shims up under here. I've got them exactly where they need to be. Got uh, the oil tubes in both of these ones. So uh, the other one, I just got to machine my groove in the other one. And and uh, these are actually, I've got them all welded in now. I've still got to weld the other one. And uh, But this one is ready to go. I mean, uh, really nothing else to do on it besides get it in place and get everything lined up where it needs to be and start welding onto the, the top plate onto it and, you know, the gussets and everything on it. So, But uh, we're going to call it quits for now and be back on it as soon as I can. Appreciate you watching, subscribing, commenting, liking. And uh, until next time, bye.